Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to see common idioms and their meanings that you can use daily. So you can talk about almost anything while sounding more like a native speaker. Let's start. Common idioms and their meanings. Number 1. 20 for 7th. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. All the time, constantly. For example, my little sister irritates me 20 for 7th. Number 2. Break a leg. It used to say good luck to someone. For example, Hey Anna, it's time for you to get on the stage and present your monologue, break a leg. The teacher asked us to break a leg at the annual day dance. It's the first night of the play tonight, and I'm so nervous. Number 3. Cost an arm and a leg. If something costs an arm and a leg, it means it is very expensive, potentially causing financial strain and emotional stress. For example, going on that luxury vacation would be amazing, but it would cost an arm and a leg. I want to buy a house by the beach, but it may cost me an arm and a leg. The vintage car restoration ended up costing me an arm and a leg, but it was worth it to see it gleaming again. Have you seen the price of petrol these days? It costs an arm and a leg. Number 4. In the same boat. In the same boat means they are in the same difficult situation or sharing a similar situation usually involving common emotions or challenges. For example, everyone's got too much work, we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat, dealing with the stress of upcoming exams. If you lose your job, you'll lose mine. We are both in the same boat. Number 5. Hit the books, literally. Hit the books this phrase is actually used to say that it's time to study. For example, Sorry, but I can't watch the game with you tonight. I have to hit the books. I won't be able to come for dinner as I have to hit the books for my half-yearly examinations. I have a test tomorrow, so I need to hit the books tonight. Got my final exams in a couple of weeks so I'm hitting the books hard at the moment. Number 6. Bite the bullet. If you bite the bullet, then you decide to make yourself do something difficult situation even though you don't want to. For example, Anna was diagnosed with second stage cancer, but he didn't want to get chemotherapy. By the will of his wife, he bit the bullet. Danny had been putting off discussing the financial management of the company, but decided to bite the bullet and talk to Sid today. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and tell her that I'm not in love with her anymore. I have to bite the bullet and tell him the truth, even though it might hurt him. Number 7. The ball is in your court. Have two or more people or parties deciding on something and one side has made their move. Great, here's only one party that's to decide now and a good way to say that is the ball in their court. So now they can either choose to accept or decline. For example, she did her best and the ball is now in your court. Giving you all the information, now the ball is in your court. Number 8. Cry over spilled milk. Crying over spilled milk means to complaining about something that cannot be fixed or misfortunes. It's not helpful to feel bad about something that happened in the past that you can't change. For example, yes, you failed the exam. 
but I'll have the chance to Ray take it so it's no use crying over spilt milk. Focus your energy on doing better next time. Yes, we made a mistake, but there's no use crying over spilled milk. Let's focus on finding a solution. Number 9. Feel under the weather. Feeling under the weather means to be unwell or not in good health, expressing a physical condition that can influence one's emotional state. For example, I won't be able to join the hiking trip tomorrow because I'm feeling a bit under the weather, and I don't want to risk making my cold worse. I won't be able to make it to the party tonight. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. My son was sick yesterday, and now I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Number 10. Once in a blue moon. A blue moon means something happens if you do something once in a blue moon. You don't do it often. It's very rarely or infrequent. For example, we don't speak that much anymore. I hear from him once in a blue moon. My childhood friends, and I rarely get a chance to meet nowadays, but once in a blue moon, we plan a reunion and remember the good old days. We eat at home most of the time we go to restaurants once in a blue moon for special occasions. Number 11. Go Cold Turkey. To go cold turkey means to suddenly stop or quit some bad or addictive dangerous behavior, like smoking, drinking alcohol. A person who suddenly quits something addictive can suffer from pale skin and goosebumps. For example, I quit smoking cold turkey and never felt the need to go back. I'm a bit of a coffee addict, and when I tried to quit cold turkey, I started to get nasty headaches. No one could believe that my father left eating sweets. He went cold turkey when the doctors told him that he had diabetes. He had been trying to quit smoking for a year but couldn't so he decided to go cold turkey. Number 12. Cash Cow A cash cow is a product or service that generates a lot of revenue for a company business or investment that generates a steady and significant income. For example, investing in real estate has proven to be a cash cow for many entrepreneurs. A singer deemed a cash cow for the record label. Number 13. A piece of cake. A piece of cake means to a task or job that's easy to do. For example, I expected the English test to be difficult, but it was a piece of cake. The boy found the project to be a piece of cake because it was incredibly easy. The English test was a piece of cake. After studying for weeks, the final exam felt like a piece of cake to Sarah, and she aced it with ease. Solving the oral every day was just a piece of cake. Number 14. Better late than never. It's preferable for someone to arrive late or do something late than not to arrive or do it at all. For example, I didn't know how to swim until I was 45, but better late than never. Well, we thought it was better late than never, but where are the others? The party's almost over but I'm glad you came better late than never right. Number 15. Spill the beans. To spill the beans means to accidentally or prematurely give out information that's supposed to be kept secret. For example, Owen spilled the beans to Joyce about her surprise party, so she knows what's happening. Stop being so coy. Just spill the beans. Emmy spilled the beans about her sister coming to her mom. I was planning a surprise party for my brother, but my parents spilled the beans. Number 16. 
Kill two birds with one stone. Kill two birds with one stone means when you get to things done in one shot. You're killing two birds with one stone. Or achieve two results by doing one thing. For example, cycling to work kills two birds with one stone. It saves money and gives you some exercise. None of us understood that he was trying to kill two birds with a stone when he joined the military forces. Number 17. You can't judge a book by its cover. This means you can't jump to conclusions only by looking at the cover or outward appearance. Or you can't really know what someone or something is actually like just based on appearance. For example, the house looked small and ugly from the outside. But inside the rooms were bright, spacious and comfortable. You can't judge a book by its cover. The candidate does look very promising, but you can't judge a book by its cover. The old house may look shabby and run down, but don't judge a book by its cover. Number 18. Twist someone's arm to twist someone's arm means they've been convinced to do something they wouldn't have done otherwise. For example, I was not planning to come to the party, but by reminding me of all the good food you twisted my arm. I was going to go to the party, but my friends twisted my arm and got me to go. Number 19. Break the ice. If you break the ice, you help strangers feel more relaxed and comfortable with each other. Or to try to become friends with someone to make a start of something. For example, English teachers have lots of activities for breaking the ice with new groups of students. It's always easiest to break the ice after I've had a few drinks. Number 20. Over the hill, if you're getting older and can't be as physically or socially active as you used to be, you might say you're over the hill. Be careful with this idiom, though, since it's rude to say it about someone else. For example, I had to slow down after my knee surgery, but I don't think I'm over the hill just yet. My mom was feeling a bit under the weather. Number 21. Under the weather. If you're feeling under the weather, you're not your usual self and could be feeling a little sick. For example, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today so I won't be coming to work. I was feeling under the weather, so I called my work and told them I was coming in. Number 22. Cutting corners. Cutting corners refers to trying to save time or money by finding cheaper or quicker ways of doing something, often with the risk of sacrificing quality. For example, wow, look how bad the work is on this house. You can tell that the builders cut corners. We need to finish this project on time. But let's be careful not to cut corners and compromise its quality. Number 23. Hit the hay or hit the sack. It means, if someone says they're going to hit the hay, it's time for bed. It reflects a need for rest. Lie down to rest possibly due to emotional exhaustion. For example, the boys were so exhausted that they hit the hay as soon as they reached the campsites. After a long day at work, I can't wait to hit the hay and get some good sleep. It's time for me to hit the sack. I'm so tired. Wow, it's already after midnight time to hit the sack. Number 24. All ears if someone is all ears. It means they are listening to the other person who has your full attention when the teacher mentioned a surprise. The students were all ears. For example, 
She had expected him to be all ears when she told him about her wedding plans. Our daughter never paid attention to us, but she was all ears when her boyfriend told her he'd break up with her if she continued to smoke. Children are all ears when the teacher tells them fairy tales. Number twenty-five. Eat like a horse. This means a horse is much bigger than a bird. I'd be right to guess that to eat like a horse is to eat a lot. For example, I never go to all-you-can-eat buffets anymore because I end up eating like a horse and feel sick afterwards. My mother has to cook a lot of food when my brother comes to visit. He eats like a horse. I've got three boys at home who eat like a horse, so my grocery bill is so high these days. Number twenty-six. Hit the nail on the head. This means to do something the exact way in which it should be done, or when you get something done perfectly. For example, the foreman hit the nail on the head. When he said that the machine had malfunctioned because of a faulty spark plug, you hit the nail on the head with this color of wallpaper for the living room. It looks better than I expected. He is a smart debugger. Every time you take a broken code to him, he will hit the nail on the head and tell you the exact problem. Number twenty-seven. Throw money down the drain. To throw money down the drain is to waste money on something that is not worthwhile or does bring any value. It is spoiled or wasted. For example, if you keep up acting like this, your reputation will go down the drain. No one will respect you anymore. Buying that expensive gadget turned out to be throwing money down the drain. I never use it. My degree in literature has so far been a lot of money down the drain, as the only jobs I've been able to get have been in restaurants waiting tables. Number twenty-eight. At all costs. At all costs means to do something regardless of the difficulty, expense, or what it might take to accomplish it. For example. Meg knew that if he gave the promise, he would keep it at all costs, and feeling her power, used it as a woman may for her friend's good. The journalist was determined at all costs to get a report from the war zone. Number twenty-nine. Sit tight. This does not mean you sit down and hold your body as tightly as you can. If a person tells you to sit tight. What they really want you to do is wait patiently. For example, I have not decided upon which course to take. I'll sit tight till I get the results of the entrance test. So I sat tight while the minute hand on the grandmother clock above the empty fireplace hauled itself upright to mark the hour. Number thirty. Ring a bell when someone says something that you may have heard before, but don't remember entirely. You can use to let them know it's familiar, but you may need a reminder. For example, the guy the prize was named after may ring a bell from high school civics. If you're old enough to have had such a class, that name rings a bell. But I can't quite remember where I know her from. Try this English idioms quiz and see if you can guess the meaning of these common English expressions. What does the idiom "barking up the wrong tree" mean? A to be in a difficult situation. B to be on the right track. C to pursue the wrong course or person. C is the answer. What does the idiom "under the weather" mean? A to be happy and content. B to be sick or unwell. C to be enjoying good health. B is the answer. What does the idiom "break a leg" mean? A to wish someone good luck. B to quit or resign. C to quit or resign. A is the answer.
What does the idiom cost an arm and a leg mean? A to be very cheap. B to be very expensive. C to be moderately priced. B is the answer. What does the idiom hit the nail on the head mean? A to be exactly right or accurate. B to do something wrong. C to miss the point. A is the answer. What does the idiom a piece of cake mean? A to be delicious. B to be very complicated. C to be easy to do. C is the answer. I hope you enjoy the video. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time.